Welcome back. The title of this mini lecture is Peter the Great, and we're going to talk about five things that as you read more and you learn more about this particular individual and this time period, that these terms are good to key in on as a way to start understanding the complexities of the era. So let's get into it. So the first thing when it comes to Peter the Great is a term called absolutism. Now, absolutism generally is a term that refers to monarchical leaders, often in Europe, that dominated in the 17th, the 18th centuries, and sort of beyond. Now, <clears throat> generally, when it comes to thinking about absolutism, when you're looking towards Russia and you're looking towards individuals like Peter, you're going to see differences in terms of the centralization of the state than you would see in say places like France where that centralization will take different forms. So Peter is certainly an individual who is fully committed to centralizing the authority of the state sort of within uh, his rule, uh, but that's going to look a little different than say, you know, Louis XIV. There'll be some similarities, but uh, you know, the, the phrase that most textbooks usually use is sort of Eastern versus Western absolutism. All right. Second thing is Bolivian rebellion or just rebellions. So Absolutist leaders are often very particular about centralizing sort of the state, you know, kind of within them, and Peter the Great was no exception to that, and so you had a number of different groups rebel against uh, the authority of the Tsar during his long reign, so he's born in something like 1672, he dies, you know, 16, pardon me, 1725, um, so the Bolivian Rebellion happens around 1707, 1708, uh, and it's one of those very big, violent uh, rebellions against uh, Tsarist authority by the Cossacks. It's put down, um, but uh, again, it's one of many that happened during, uh, during Peter's reign. The third term for us is something called the Great Northern War. So Peter famously was sort of hell-bent on expansion of the Russian state, uh, the creation of a more modern sort of late 18th, uh, you know, uh, late 17th, early 18th century empire. Uh, so you're going to see modernization when it comes to the Russian military, uh, an embrace and construction of uh, a naval, uh, a naval fleet as well, a desire to have uh, freshwater ports that can, you know, then project force for the Russians and engage in more trade, right, this kind of thing. And so in order to do that, uh, the Russian state is going to go to war. Uh, the Great Northern War in particular uh, begins around 1700, and it lasts all the way until uh, 1721 with something called the Treaty of Nystad, uh, where the Russians are fighting Sweden uh, and a number of others. Uh, by the time you get to 1721, uh, the Russian military had fought for a very long time. They'd fought a number of battles here. Uh, and, you know, with this treaty, although they're going to pay Sweden and have to give back large portions of territories of Finland that they had captured earlier, they're going to take a number of other territories. You know, certainly the nations uh, such as this modern nation of Estonia, etc., uh, are going to fall under Russian control here. This sort of brings us to our, our fourth point. Uh, our fourth term, which is St. Petersburg. So again, uh, Peter, when he was younger, had had a number of advisors from sort of Western Europe. He very famously had traveled, uh, supposedly incognito, but you know, given how tall he was, it's hard to be incognito, uh, to learn about maritime culture and about you know, differing political practices and, and sort of this kind of thing. Uh, and one of the things that, that Peter decides to do is he wants to construct a new major city, uh, and St. Petersburg will, will open around 1703. Now, the process of constructing St. Petersburg, which will become the Russian capital until the early 1900s, 1917, uh, is something that was particularly difficult. It was particularly violent. It was a, a rough process. Uh, Peter kind of had to force people to go there because there's not a lot of good access in terms of food and everything else, and the conditions are pretty bad. 
Uh, and so, uh, you know, the, the stories of sort of the, the numbers of construction workers who die, you know, in, in, in the process of building this city uh, is, is quite large. Uh, and then eventually, of course, uh, Peter will eventually construct, uh, will oversee the construction of, of Peterhof as well. All right, this takes us to our fifth point. So the fifth point is the table of, of rank or the table of ranks. Uh, so one of the things that, that Peter the Great does uh, during this time period, uh, this is just a few years before his death, is oversee really an attempt to kind of tier uh, titles of nobility, the hierarchical structure of the titles of nobility, uh, to a process kind of overseen, well, process overseen by the state. Um, you know, noble authority and sort of the power of hereditary nobility was something that, that the Russians had struggled with, that Tsars had struggled with, uh, and Peter was no exception to that. Uh, and so this was uh, an attempt to, to combat that. All right. Thanks so very much.